All right, welcome back. This is part two in an ongoing series that I'm going to be doing, looking into allegations that Jason Ward of MakingStarWars.net fame had inappropriate conversation with a 15-year-old girl as well as other women, in addition to allegations that he is one way in public and another way in private that would shock most of his fans. I'm going to be diving a little bit deeper into it. In today's video, I'll be going over... Uh, some information that I came across that was made available to me. Um, certain things about this video you're about to see um, have been edited out to protect the 15 year old child, as well as um, pretty much keep her from being bullied and other creepers creeping on her. I think it's important to hear her story in her own words. And I think um, that it's an incredibly powerful testimony and I'm going to be playing it in its entirety. It's about 10 minutes long and then I will be making comments along the way. You will see edits in my video and that is to protect the underage child that is making these claims. Okay. I don't want her docs. I don't want her to go through any further nonsense than she's already gone through it. When you see the video, you'll understand that it affected her deeply and I don't want anything further to happen from her. The information that will be released in the video is information that Jason Ward himself has already made public. Okay, so first and foremost, there were no nudes. There, he didn't act sexual towards her. We know this from the DMs at least that were made public. And as this video will go into, um, as her video will go into, uh, it appears that that was their only contact through direct messaging, but she goes ahead and divulges the fact that she was abused when she was younger, which just adds to the whole problem here. Hi, I'm Cal Katsisren. You guys know me as... Um, I'm going to be telling my experience with making Star Wars, which is Jason Ward and... Um, people may know me as a 15 year old girl that was having conversations with Jason Ward and I really just want to get you know the truth out there so no wrong information is spread first off I want to clarify things Jason did not ask me for nudes or be sexual towards me but his actions did make me uncomfortable as I was sexually assaulted in 6th grade People who have been abused show a pattern of behavior that, to a trained eye, you can see from a distance. Okay, all you have to do is listen to them talk, watch their, watch their tweets, watch their chats, you know, any interaction that you have with them when you start deeping, diving deeper into it. You get the indication that something tragic had happened in their past. Now, is it always sexual abuse? No. But at the same time, if these people are displaying a vulnerable nature, that can be taken advantage of to someone who's looking to take advantage of them. And the thing is, I'm very, I'm easily manipulated. So, I am easily, like, I, you know, I just, I get drawn in easily by things. But I do want to also say, Jason did ask for nudes and was sexual towards Celine. Now, Celine is a 20-year-old girl who had um, a conversation over Twitter with uh, Jason Ward. And it, it, that in and of itself goes into a gray area, not only because of the age difference. They're both adults, but the fact of the matter is, is that there's information that has come out from that that I'll get into in another video that just boosts up the creep factor as far as Jason's so concerned. So I just want to go ahead and clarify that. And she has her text on her Twitter page. Um, I had the strength and courage to make a video because of Celine. She really helped me with this. She made me feel brave enough. And I'm showing my side and my experience because I've seen some videos on YouTube covering. Okay, so she felt compelled because of things that she had seen and things that she'd been hearing and she wanted to clear the air. So this is what she's basically gonna go into in the next eight and a half minutes. 
because I've seen some videos on YouTube covering everything, but I want to show a perspective from one of the people that Jason texted. So these are from his Twitter page since he posted a screen recording of our conversation. I didn't have the conversation anymore because he told me to delete it. Okay, right there is extremely important. Okay, Jason Ward asked her to delete the direct message thread and she did so. So, because whenever he sent me the leaks, he told me to delete the stuff and not share it to anyone. So, I did that. So, I had actually messaged him first. I apologized because I felt like I owed him an apology because, um, I don't know. I just, I always feel sorry about things. And, you know... There's my conversation. I apologized to him a little bit. And he... One of the things that made me uncomfortable with his text is he said, So you're on your way to being better than most, and I totally dig that. Which, basically, he was saying I was more mature than most of the Raylos that he's probably spoken with. Which made me uncomfortable. The, the blue is his text. I want to clarify that, too. He offered me to be part of his circle of trust, and he promised me not to tell anyone or show anyone about the thing. And, you know, of course I said, yeah, because that would mean Star Wars leaks. And I was like, okay, cool. Now, although, again, all of this could have been innocent and with no ulterior motive but the terminology that's being used um it it's troublesome because it displays a predatory behavior i'm gonna do something for you that's cool and you're gonna promise me that you're not gonna say anything and you're not gonna tell anyone okay now by itself like i said it could be totally innocent Okay, but just remember that as far as predators go, when things like this occur, when the line is finally crossed and things become physical in any sort of way, there is then the threat, don't tell anyone, I'll hurt your family, I'll hurt you, or whatever it may be. Now, again, just to clarify, I'm not saying that this is what occurred. I'm saying that the terminology that's being used is indicative of predatory behavior. And he wanted me to defend him. And I was very hesitant because I have some friends that were harassed by Jason Ward with tweets and that were made very uncomfortable by his rude comments. So there she is saying that she has friends that Jason Ward has, uh, I'm assuming the friends are her age, that Jason Ward went after on Twitter and made them feel uncomfortable as well as probably talking down to them, snide comments, those kinds of things. And, you know, I just kind of, I was very hesitant about this, so I just said, I'll try my best. He said, yeah, the internet can really suck, but you can make it good. I was really happy about your messages today. You gave me a little faith in humanity. And so, you and I are Star Wars buddies now. And the thing is, Jason Moore is a 40-year-old male. He said that him and I were Star Wars buddies. Let me clarify something. I'm 15 years old. I had just turned 15, like, two months before these messages. Are you understanding the creep factor now? I mean, it, it's bizarre. In retrospect, this 15-year-old has more clarity on the situation than Jason Ward does even to this day. This made her feel uncomfortable. The terminology and the phrasing and the words that he's using, I don't believe, is indicative of a normal, platonic, innocent conversation. Private, mind you. Private conversation between a guy in his 40s and a 15-year-old girl. 
I was like, hey, Jason, I kind of want to make up for what I've done recently, so I was hoping to make a post to defend you. But, um, I was scared. So that's why I was very hesitant, and that's why I messaged him first. It may not seem like I was just saying, you know, I changed my mind about it, but I was changing my mind about it during it. And, um, he said, yeah, just don't say you ever saw it from me. But again, he's inclined to have this conversation, this private conversation with this 15 year old girl, but he doesn't want her telling anyone that it occurred. Why? However, you totally don't have to, which is pretty sarcastic to me or just very, you know, guilt tripping. But that's just maybe just me. And, you know, I was struggling around this time too because my dad had just gotten diagnosed with prostate cancer. And I, I couldn't get tickets at the time. And he had offered to get, he offered me to, he offered to get me a Fandang Fandango code for the theater, for the movies in general, to well, for see Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. And this led on for maybe two to three weeks, but I ended up actually. Um, I won some tickets on this one thing, but they ended up actually expiring before the movie, so it kind of sucked, but me and Jason started talking in October 2019, I want to say that, and we'd gotten into a heated argument, but one of the tweets made me uncomfortable ever since then, which it's not the next one I'm about to show, but it's the one after, but this was whenever me and him had gotten into the argument. Um, so he had called all Raylos, you know, hormonal 14 year olds, and you know, that's just kind of, I feel like that's really, you know, it's just, that isn't true. And not all Raylos are actually, yeah, there's some Raylos, you know, I know there's some that are like, that have had their moments and that people are disgusted with them. There's some Raylos that are good. I personally, I'm still a Raylo, but I don't really praise it as much on my social media account because I was disappointed with how the Raylos reacted to the Rise of Skywalker and some of the death threats I saw so, being sent to. Think about that for a minute. Abrams, you have a 15 year old who shows who, in this exchange, appears to be far more mature than even Jason Ward is acting. She recognizes that the group that she belongs to and champions, the Raylos, uh, those that wanted Ray and Kylo to be a couple and those kinds of things, um, that there's an extreme. So she's, she has the clarity of thought to recognize that there's an extreme part of the group that she belongs to. And she has taken it upon herself to distance herself from that aspect of that community. It shows clarity as far as when she, when we get to the point where she looks back in hindsight, although she was caught up in the moment and how Jason was treating her, in hindsight, she's able to look at it and you can tell from this last statement that she's able to say, hey, yeah, you know what? These different things don't add up and it truly makes me uncomfortable looking back in hindsight so here's the next thing this is what made me uncomfortable so yeah i said how do you know are you gonna believe someone close to the the rise of skywalker cast or a holy trinity leaker and he said i'll forgive you when i'm right and you ask me forgiveness my child that's what's always made me uncomfortable <laughs> i'm sorry i don't want to get emotional but that's what's always made me uncomfortable is when he called me my child and he referred to Celine as his niece, which is really weird for him to be saying these things to younger females. She's 100% correct. Her calling him the Holy Trinity leaker is spot on because he, gets, he has the inside track on a lot of Star Wars information. And it's my suspicion that he's being fed this information 
from certain people within Lucasfilm to get the information out there, and they're using him as a conduit. As a byproduct of that, it appears to me that he's then using that information to feed his power, and he divvies these things out to certain individuals that will help feed his ego at the very least. Now, again, this could all be completely innocent banter. Okay, he's just making a snide comment, whatever. But the problem that I have is that when you look at the information in its entirety, and there's still more information coming out every day, that this shows a pattern of behavior. Now, what kind of behavior is he exhibiting? I'll get in that in another video as well. And I do want to say there's proof of the text. This is a link. I'm going to click on. Okay, so the link did not work out because of where you know me I had blocked him but this is where he had posted our DMs these are all he posted the she's evidence blocked him and he okay she wants at this point nothing to do with him the things that she, made me she, really uncomfortable. she felt so uncomfortable she doesn't even want to see his post anymore okay and she doesn't want him to see her post so again not just this as one piece take all of the information together and form your own opinion ask yourself if she didn't feel as uncomfortable as she claims she did why would she go ahead and block the one guy in the community that seems to have the most inside track to the latest star wars information why would she do that but before i end off the video i'm going to show you celine's story and she is the one that actually inspired me to do this. So I'm going to put her, the link of her story in the bio. I'm not very sure. I'll find out. Um, but yeah, you know, he was very, he, oh yeah. Wait a minute. Okay, so I saw a part on her tweet about the Instagram photo things, and this was where I had posted my story. And I'm gonna show this one tweet. He never flirted with me, but he always seemed that he wanted me to consider him a god, which is true. He always wanted me to be like, he's the holy trinity, or he's a god. And one day he randomly liked one of my photos on Instagram, and I've never shared my personal Instagram page. So it made me, you know really uncomfortable I just pushed it off and ended up just blocking him on Instagram but he had seen a lot of my Instagram stories so she's never publicly shared her Instagram page but Jason Ward shows up to randomly like one of her photos and has seen some of her stories on Instagram now for me this proves that it's starting to go down a hole and show a pattern that this is not his first rodeo, okay? Somehow, some way, he figured out what her Instagram was. Now, don't get me wrong, some of these things are fairly easy, but if she's not using her Twitter handle as her Instagram handle, how difficult would it be to actually find her Instagram account? Don't know, haven't tried. So, I couldn't tell you personally. But Jason did. Jason went out onto Instagram and hunted down her Instagram account. Why? Was it because he wanted to see what she looked like? He knew she was 15. Okay. This particular tweet, she's talking, this is April 27th. Okay. Now, at what point did he like her Instagram page or pictures on her Instagram page? I don't know. I don't have that evidence. Because, again, I haven't gone to, I haven't hunted her down on Instagram, okay? But Jason Ward did. And this added to the information that she already had that made her uncomfortable with my child and these other interactions that she had with him on Twitter. Now she feels the whole situation is even more creepy because now you have this guy who's in his 40s hunting down the Instagram page of a 15-year-old.
Why is he doing that? All right, so that's where the video abruptly ends. But the thing that bugs me the most about what she said was that she had never publicly put out her Instagram account. So how did he find it? More importantly, what was he doing looking for it? She's a 15-year-old girl. Did he want to know what she looked like? Was he curious? Why? What is he doing? Okay, that's the thing that is most upsetting about what she had to say today. Well, that's all I got. So if you guys enjoyed the video, wreck the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Make sure you comment below. Let me know what your opinion is. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'll talk to you later. Be cool.